Hey guys, VBED here with another VPlace taking a look at the XF5U, otherwise known as the pancake in this game, but if you look at it historically, the nickname it was actually given was the Waffle. Now that's pretty obvious as to why they decided to call it this, because this aircraft pretty much doesn't have wings. It utilizes the entirety of the body as a lifting body for the airframe, and I guess the way that it used the prop wash over the body allowed it to raise itself into the air. It actually sat at a 45 degree angle sitting on the deck and it was designed to be able to do short takeoff and landing from some smaller vessels in order to be able to provide some type of escort capability. Now you can see we are sporting the flying squirrel camouflage for this aircraft. I just love it. I think it's a really cool concept and very fun. I wish they had more of these fun camouflage jobs on some of these aircraft. Now we are going to go after this command center initially and this aircraft does sport two 1,000 pound bombs. And we are going to take a passing shot at a couple of these air defense aircraft. Now with most heavies you want to do an up and over turn against incoming targets. I try to go after this aircraft but I probably should have known I didn't have enough separation to be able to get the hits on them. But I'm going to try and help my team out by getting this aircraft and I start running into the edge of my mouse pad yet again. I think I should probably change the sensitivity so I don't need that much travel. Now this is a 3 versus 3 fight which is a great fight for us and it is a top tier tier 8 battle for us so we are sitting pretty at this stage now there is an airfield in the center and there is also a military base down to the south now obviously we would like to go for the military base because that'll give us another offensive capability and at the very least we want to deny our adversary from being able to get it this aircraft's altitude ceiling is 6500 which is something we're kind of familiar with from the p-1056 but this aircraft can climb very, very fast. Its propellers are essentially helicopter blades, so this thing is really good at being able to get into the climb, and its stall speed is very, very low. This thing stalls at around 37 miles an hour, which is very, very incredible. This thing it just does not care at all about low airspeed. Now we are heading on an XP... 58, yeah, there it is. That's a premium aircraft that's being flown by a bot. And I do kind of like that the bots fly the premium aircraft. It kind of shows you what they're capable of before you actually get there. And we made a brushing pass on him. I would like to prioritize that aircraft. And you can see Marksman 2 is going to work in this stage. Now, I was going to go after that other air defense aircraft, but this heavy looks like he's probably going to turn they usually turn when they get to the edge of the zone and i'm firing before we're actually in range because i know i'll start getting the hit indicators because we're still within inside the range that i can hit him it's just not optimal so there's some damage fall off and that allowed me to be able to walk those rounds on the target and take him out now you can just see the overall damage potential from these cannons we were able to take off a large chunk of the hit points on the enemy bomber flight. And as a heavy aircraft, you do want to prioritize going after these bomber flights if it doesn't look like there's a lot of opposition around. Because if they go uninterrupted, they will go after our command center and take it pretty easily. Now i got to try and pulse my fire here. And I see that there was some bullets coming over my shoulder. It's because the Doe 335 is helping me out. And I probably should get out of his way so that way he can do that very thing. I paused my shot there because I didn't want to hit my ally. And we have eliminated the enemy defenses or the enemy attack aircraft. So now we can go back to aiding in the defense of the airfield that our allies were able to take hold of. I would like to now go over to the command center and I will take out this F4U4 on my way there. We're just about inside the range, which is around 2,600 feet, and with such low health, it was very easy to eliminate that target. Now, with these 1,000-pound bombs, they have a very large blast radius of 295 feet, and they do about 6,000 damage each, so that's enough to be able to take out that radar site, as well as this normal garrison type building that they have here and that should be enough to flip the zone and now it's simply mopping up enemy aircraft because now we have the air superiority which means that we're getting a lot of points every tick 
There's some uh, bombers inbound yet again, and I'm using my boost, and I used all my boost up, but that's why I have the consumable on here for engine ventilation, which allows me to get 40% of my boost back, so I can catch up to these enemy aircraft as rapidly as possible. Here we are taking care of the first aircraft, and I do note that there are some triangles heading in this direction, which means enemy aircraft are inbound on my position. Taking out two of these bombers should be enough to be able to allow us to keep that sight, even if the bombers go through. So I have done my part, and I am going to move on to find another target. We took out that Focke-Wolf very, very easily, and now there's a P-51D. And it is a bot, so he's doing that weird, I'm going to maneuver and roll when I should just turn out of your way. You have the maneuverability on me, sir, but that's fine. I make a mistake here and try to double back. I should not have tried to double back. I knew I was being chased by several aircraft. And the Yak-3 makes short work of us with his very high caliber cannons. So we're going to have to get back to the respawn and see if we can help our allies out in defending what zones we have left since it looks like the enemy was able to flip the airfield. Interesting fact about the pancake while we're waiting. Uh, there was only a couple of test models built for this, and when they were flying this aircraft around, the general public started reporting UFO sightings, and it was mostly attributed to this aircraft, so I thought that was very interesting, and I believe that was in the New England area of the northeastern United States. Now our bombers are inbound on this airfield, and they should be able to flip it fairly easily, but I am going to try and find some player targets opposed to going after these air defense aircraft since they are going to be disappearing shortly anyways. And I see this 302, that's that rocket plane. It's a very, very weak aircraft, but very, very fast. So it's nice to be able to take out a strategic asset like that. Now that pretty much ends the battle, and let's go take a look at the post-game results. <laughs> As we can see here from the post-game stats, 12 kills as well as capturing four sectors and we took out three ground targets and we also assisted in destroying two. We came up as top of the leaderboard with 11,750 personal points and we got a grade two heavy and that ranked us as first overall on both teams. We even outperformed the Doe 335, the new premium aircraft you can get from the West fall missions or west wall i keep saying fall west wall missions looking at the upgrade tree the cannons on this aircraft are able to pump out 700 rounds a minute which is substantially more than all of the other standard american 20s all the other american 20s including the tier 10 ones only pump out 600 rounds per minute now this doesn't change the damage per second but it does increase the amount of fire coming out of the aircraft and as you saw it overheated very quickly but with four cannons it was able to hit a lot more often and a miss from one of those shells wasn't nearly as dire as it would be for missing a few rounds with the 20 millimeter for the tier 10s because each shell is while it's packing less damage you have a higher potential of getting more of them on target just by sheer volume and that's the advantage of this set of guns on this aircraft and the proof is in the pudding you guys saw how it played now i prioritize on almost all of my cannon aircraft utilizing marksman 2 i think it was pretty evident how well that played out and we even went so far as to use the gyroscopic gun sight to increase that accuracy even more and pretty standard heavy load out here engine tuning in order to get some more boost to speed out of the airframe as well as improved aircraft polish to give us a higher end top speed as well as better acceleration in the dive and we took advantage of that both times during this battle now you do have an option of several different air to ground armaments the 500 pounders are really just placeholders for the thousand pounders and if you're so inclined you can mount the tiny tim rockets very 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 large rockets these things are massive but if you take a look at the damage output and the blast radius it pales in comparison to what you can get with the thousand pound bombs the thousand pound bombs just give you a little bit more consistency in being able to take out ground targets in a passing run some of 
you may struggle with getting bombs on target and it's easier for you to just launch a rocket, that's perfectly fine. Two of these rockets usually will be able to take out most ground sites to their entirety. The thousand pounders are going to definitely take out a ground site with two bombs to exclude the mining facility's main building, but I still feel like the thousand pounders are going to be my choice weapon. I prefer to use bombs in most instances. I just kind of like to see that huge blast go up from the ordnance as they strike the target. The grind is going to be a little bit difficult as f at first because the stock machine guns are only going to be pumping out 52 damage a second. Granted, it is six machine guns, so it's not too, too bad. But you can see here, that is a drop of 22 to the overall gun armament ranking. And then even when you upgrade to the next class, it's still going to be 18 less than what you can achieve with the 20 millimeters, which is a 39 gun armament rating. So these machine guns are going to be the same machine guns that you see on the P-38J as well as the starting guns for the F-84B and the F-J-1. So comparable and the damage output to what you see with a Mustang P-51H. Now that is definitely not what you want on your heavy aircraft at tier 8. So I suggest prioritizing getting the guns as fast as you possibly can. I chucked a bunch of free experience at this when i ran into some gold i converted to free experience and i just got these guns and it changed the entire aircraft for me the next thing i would then prioritize would be getting the engines you should already have the bombs unlocked from the f7f if you unlocked it to its entirety definitely suggest getting these bombs as well but that would be more of an afterthought hopefully you unlock them on the f7f I would then go for the airframe after the engines, and then if you were so inclined to get the Tiny Tims, this is a good spot to unlock them because this aircraft is a pleasure to fly, and if you were planning on at some point going down the P-47 Thunderbolt line and eventually getting one of the Thunderstreaks, the Thunderstreaks can carry Tiny Tim rockets, so it's nice to be able to augment an aircraft by having it have 14 air to ground rockets. It's just a fantastic sight to see it on the Thunderstreak, and I am highly anticipating getting the opportunity to use it. When it comes to the consumables, I like to run on my heavy aircraft, manual fire extinguisher, pneumatic restarter, and engine ventilation, and there's a logic to this setup. If I'm going to get into an engagement that I don't want to be in, I can always run away. So if I'm running away and I'm on fire, I have a higher chance of dying or taking more damage than I would like. Pneumatic restarter in order to get that engine back up to continue my exodus from the battlefield, and if I'm out of any boost, this will give me 40% of my boost back at the push of a button. I use it to be able to catch up to those bombers in order to wipe them out to ensure the uh, security of our command center. So guys, I, I really advocate using engine ventilation. It's only available on heavy fighters and it's definitely worth your while to spend the extra points on it. It's also important to note here that this aircraft's maneuverability is at 13 second turn time, and if you compare that to any of its peers at tier eight, you're going to find that the 262 is not nearly maneuverable with an overall maneuverability rating of 34, and the UK aircraft, the P-1056, with a 33 rating is going to pale even greater. And let's pull up the American Tier 8 Heavy, just for sake of argument. There's our aircraft at 43, and if you come up against the premium aircraft, the chain lightning, the chain lightning is also going to underperform in the maneuverability department. So you can outclimb any aircraft at this tier. You're going to be able to outpace most of the heavies and you're going to be able to out turn all of the other heavies. So you just go up to max altitude and you can maintain control of the fight. This aircraft climbs incredibly fast and has a very, very low stall speed. The stall speed on this aircraft is sitting around 37 miles an hour. 
with the entire aircraft being a lifting body, it does not need a lot of force to keep it up in the air. So if you decide that you're going to try to outclimb somebody, they will stall out far before your aircraft will. And just look at these propellers. This thing is essentially a helicopter. So, guys, I hope you saw the potential that this aircraft has available to it. And this is definitely going to be staying in my garage for the enduring period of my time in this game. If you unlock this aircraft, it is also a great credit earner. Note that we are running a premium, so we are getting 121,000 credits out of this. But even without a premium, 72,000 is not bad. And it was an absolute joy to play this battle for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe. Give me that thumbs up. And if you didn't like any part of the video, please drop it in the comments. Let me know what you would like me to do differently. And if you guys have any requests, let me know. I'll see if I can get the aircraft for you or dig it up from inside my garage. That way I can show you guys what it's capable of. And if you would like me to go over some tactics as well, I can do that if you would like. Just let me know. I'll catch you guys on the next one.